Hello there, this is Out Motorsports. My name is Jake and this is the 2022 Grand Wagoneer. I've been told not to call this a Jeep, but it is a Jeep. It's just what they will tell you is a premium extension of the Jeep brand. Now, if you're like me, you probably grew up in a time where the Grand Wagoneer, the old Grand Wagoneer, ruled the SUV world for a brief period. They started making the Grand Wagoneer back when Jeep was AMC, and they started in the 1960s and made the same vehicle with minimal changes all the way through 1991. At the time, early on, it was much more just the full-size Jeep. They called it the FSJ. But then over the decades, it got nicer and nicer and nicer and basically became this very premium, very luxury version of a sport utility vehicle that could get you anywhere, but also be used for date night or a family car. Just take you anywhere in a lot of comfort and luxury. And so it went from being called the Wagoneer to the Grand Wagoneer. And those are the ones that I grew up with. I am a child of the 80s and 90s, and I had several friends whose parents had Grand Wagoneers. Now, these were not cheap vehicles at the time. They started at $19,000 or so in the mid-1980s when they were called Grand Wagoneer. That works out to about $52,000 today adjusted for inflation. This Grand Wagoneer, by comparison, is, according to Stellantis, its parent company, the epitome of American comfort and luxury and craftsmanship, and as such, it costs quite a bit more. But you've probably heard there is a Grand Wagoneer and there is a Wagoneer. So let's talk about what those two vehicles are because they're actually the same vehicle. And then we'll get behind the wheel with this Grand Wagoneer and see how it is as a tow vehicle. You can see I've got my 20-foot enclosed trailer hooked up here behind it, and I have a race car to go retrieve from the paint shop. So let's get into this real quick, and then we'll get on the road and pick up that car. Now, before we get too far into this, please take a second, subscribe to the channel right here on YouTube. We would love your support. We appreciate all of it so far. Thank you so much. And with that, on to the Grand Wagoneer. All right, so first of all, with this 2022 Grand Wagoneer, what is it as a basic vehicle? Jeep, for the longest time after that original Grand Wagoneer was discontinued, has had nothing bigger than the Grand Cherokee. They also had the Commander, which was basically a stretched Grand Cherokee with a third row, and it was during that Daimler Chrysler period where a lot of stuff was kind of iffy, and it sold okay, but not it wasn't the evolution of the Grand Wagoneer like we had all hoped. This is not based on a Grand Cherokee. This is more or less a Ram 1500 underneath, and it is on a four-corner independent suspension. In this case, it has four-corner air suspension. The base suspension is a steel spring setup because the Wagoneer versus the Grand Wagoneer covers quite a price spread. So not only is the suspension different, there's a lot of other different things going on here as well. The basic Wagoneer is this same exact vehicle. They are all this big, this size. They have three rows of seats. And the whole point with these is to have a ton of comfort for your passengers in first, second, and third row seats. So they're all this big. They are all more or less in between the size of a Chevy Tahoe and a Chevy Suburban. So if you know other large body on frame SUVs, they're in between the size of a Tahoe and a Suburban. And because of that, they are all on the same wheelbase, of course. It is a 123-inch wheelbase, which is pretty substantial for a vehicle of this size, for a vehicle with this tow rating. They're both rated Wagoneer or Grand Wagoneer to tow a relative ton of weight. Obviously, Jeep wants these to be the top of their class for what they can tow behind the vehicle, whether it's a race car, whether it's a horse trailer, whether it's a big boat. They want you to be able to pull it with this vehicle. So they claim up to 10,000 pounds of towing capacity. The Grand Wagoneer is set up to tow 9,850 pounds. I believe the regular Wagoneer is the one that gets to pull all 10,000 pounds. Now I find that interesting because the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer have different drivetrains. Back in the old Grand Wagoneer days, the only engine you could really end up with by the end of the run was a 360 cubic inch V8 that made 100 something horsepower, 200 something pound feet of torque, and ultimately wasn't enough motor for the vehicle. And those were only given a tow rating of 5,000 pounds, which at the time was best in class. But things have changed. Ultimately, this vehicle is way bigger than the original Grand Wagoneer was. The Grand Wagoneer back then was kind of the size of today's Grand Cherokee and the new Grand Cherokee L. The regular Wagoneer has the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. It is the e-torque version of that V8, but that won't do for the Grand Wagoneer because the regular Wagoneer competes with the Tahoes, the Expeditions, the Sequoias of the world. The Grand Wagoneer competes with the Navigator, the Escalade, those sorts of vehicles. This is premium, this is luxury, honey. And you can't have a 5.7 here. 
So they threw in the 6.4 liter gas V8 from the Ram 2500 under hood here. It is a monstrous motor. It makes 471 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque, and it goes to the wheels through an eight-speed torque flight automatic transmission, and in this case, standard four-wheel drive. The regular Wagoneer has several varieties of four-wheel drive system, including one that's a basic transfer case setup that's two-wheel drive normally, and then four high, four low. In the case of the Grand Wagoneer, they are all a full-time four-wheel drive system with low range. It does still have a transfer case, but it's a full-time setup that can engage and disengage as needed, so you don't have to push any buttons. As far as towing, like I said, up to 10,000 pounds with this vehicle. This one in particular, the Grand Wagoneer, is rated for 9,850. Payload is a concern here because these vehicles are very luxurious. They have a lot of stuff inside. They have up to 75 inches of screens if you care to have all of them, if you get the Series 3 or the Obsidian with all the stuff inside. So payload is gonna take a hit. So yes, you can tow up to 10,000 pounds or call it 9,800 in this case. And with a 10% tongue weight, that's 980 pounds on the tongue, which you must subtract from the vehicle's payload. So if you take 980 pounds off of that, you, don't have a whole lot of weight to play with. So what you're not gonna be doing if you wanna be within weight limits of this Grand Wagoneer is towing a 9,850 pound trailer and having you and five of your buddies in the back of this Grand Wagoneer. You're gonna be way over the payload. So you just really need to think about that. If you're going to be towing with this, how many people are gonna be in the vehicle versus what are you pulling and what is the tongue weight of it? So. It's not a problem just with this Grand Wagoneer. It's something you have to think about with any of these three row large SUVs. But if they're gonna make this big 10,000 pound towing claim, I'd hope the payload was a little higher. I have a race car to get. The trailer is hooked up. It's currently empty, but we will get it loaded up with the car. And then we'll talk about how this thing tows with about 6,800, 7,000 pounds hanging off the hitch. All right, so race car is in the trailer. We are all strapped down, hooked up, and headed back home. So total rolling weight here is 6,800, 7,000 pounds, depending on who's counting. Um, tongue weight wise, we're right at that 10% mark. I have had that measured. So, um, you know, under the, the specs for this vehicle by a decent bit, but this is probably reflective of what most people will be towing uh, compared to actually running right up to that 10,000 pound number. Now the good news is because I've got less tongue weight uh, than that maximum number, I could have more people in the vehicle uh, than if I had, you know, nine, 985 pounds or a thousand pounds of tongue weight hanging off the back. It reduces your payload less. So that is of course very helpful. <laughs> now the first thing that I've had to deal with here, you'll notice I've got a trailer brake controller sitting here uh, in the cup holders and you shouldn't have to do this and that is because the 2022 Grand Wagoneer actually has a trailer brake controller built in. It's right down here by your right knee and in theory that all works. The problem is that the trailer connector uh, at the back of the Jeep is not quite fitting right for my trailer plug. So I actually had to use my, my wireless trailer brake controller to kind of intercept everything and its plug seems to fit just a little bit better. But in either case, I'm having some issues where the Wagoneer is telling me my trailer lights are out or the trailer's disconnected. So this is the best solution I've found. It's basically this built-in brake controller is disabled and I'm using the, the third party one. Um, and it works fine, but the, the connector doesn't fit very well. Uh, for a standard seven pin. So I've had some looseness there. Um, so kind of a bummer, but beyond that, uh, we'll get out here on the interstate and talk about how this thing pulls in just a second. And speaking of working hard, the 6.4, you know, it makes a lot of its horsepower toward the top of the revs. It makes its torque a little lower. It is a truck motor but uh, you know, there's no boost, it's naturally aspirated, so you do have to wind it out a little bit and you have to just be okay doing that. This is 4,500 RPM, it's fine. 
we're at 65 miles an hour. But this is not like a low stress motor for the sake of barely burbling along and still getting you up to speed. You are going to work it on on ramps, on hills, you know, that sort of thing. But that's that's how these big gas motors are. Now, as far as hooking this thing up and, and stability at speed and just everything suspension related. This Grand Wagoneer has the quadrilift air suspension. So it's four corner air. This is an independent rear suspension setup, no leaf springs here. And this is the same process to hook up or detach a trailer as one of the Ram trucks that has air suspension on it. And what that means is you have to go in the infotainment system. This is the new Uconnect 5 system, but you have to go in here and you have to put the truck in tire jack mode. And what that means is it basically puts the air suspension at its normal ride height and then it locks it so it will not respond when you put anything on the tongue of the trailer or when you're unhooking when you take it all off again. And that helps it so you don't have to overwork your trailer tongue jack. Um, it makes it so if you're hooking up weight distribution as you might want to, uh, the truck doesn't respond and kick the, the back of the truck up before you have a chance to load level everything on its own. Four corner air or even rear airbags are really nice for the sake of helping things look more level and getting rid of sag, but they don't do anything as far as shooting weight forward. You really need weight distribution if you're actually going to try and take some weight off the back axle. And then of course, once you're on the move, I've got this in tow haul mode, which will lock the suspension out again at speed. Normally the Grand Wagoneer will lower itself into an aero mode when you're at highway speed like this, and uh, it, it won't do that. It doesn't wanna mess with anything as far as raising and lowering and upsetting the trailer. So that's part of what tow haul mode does. Um, it also messes with your shift points and, and how the truck upshifts and downshifts based on your driving to help, you know, not only rely on the brakes to slow things down in particular. And stability here is excellent. My trailer is a 20 foot box with a four foot V nose and uh, from the, the tongue all the way to the taillights is about 27 feet. And this Grand Wagoneer is long enough overall and, you know, has the wheelbase overall to pull this trailer very well. I, this is very stable. Granted, I, this is not a windy day at all. We, we had some rain this morning that's moved past, but uh, everything feels really good. I think if you had a bigger trailer than mine, you may or may not be okay with it. You know, if you had a 24 foot versus a 20, TBD. Uh, I think that 24 would be the absolute max you could get away with with a vehicle this size. If you're pulling a car on an open trailer that's just a flat, like a U-Haul style trailer, sure, load it up to the, the top weight that the vehicle can support. If you're pulling a boat, you're fine. Really, the, the big enclosed trailers like this, the big box trailers, are really the hard ones to deal with because they're just a giant sail in the wind. And even mine with the Vinos, it doesn't much matter. You know, it just, it's a lot for the wind to catch and try to pull around. So you need a, a stable chassis to, uh, to keep it all you know, controlled and moving in the right, the right direction. I do want to talk about drivetrains while we're, while we're getting to this hilly portion of the drive. Like I said, this has the 6.4, the, the Wagoneer has the 5.7 with e-torque, and uh, I just wish there was something else here. This is very much the OG Grand Wagoneer formula in every way. The whole vehicle is the OG Grand Wagoneer brought into the, you know, 2022 model year. It's got a giant V8, you know, the biggest thing that they can stuff under it based on what they sell right now. And it's got a whole lot of luxurious features and creature comforts. And, you know, that's it. It is, it is luxury via excess as far as feature count is concerned and, you know, insulation and comfort and all those sorts of things. Uh, it is not luxury by drivetrain technology. And, you know, everyone defines luxury differently, and that's fine. But I really wish they could, you know, this is, this is the 6.4 that's in the Ram 2500. Obviously, if that fits, I'm just curious what else would fit. Could you fit the 6.7 Cummins in this? You know, Cadillac is doing it with a diesel that, granted, theirs is the 3-liter the diesel from GM. Ram also has a three liter eco diesel. Could that not go in here? Are they working on something that's more of a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid or even full electric down the road? Like, I hope so. I know Stellantis is doing a lot with electrification in the next few years. They've talked a really big game. I just think it's a little fascinating. I'm choosing my words carefully. It's fascinating that in the year of everything 2022, they chose to release a vehicle that only has two big V8 engines as its drivetrains. I think people are looking for 
other options and you know this is towing just fine and we should all be so fortunate to drive something that has this good of an exhaust note because big V8s sound incredible and this one is it is loud it is rowdy it is it is it's got personality and charm and character and I do like that about the whole setup but where where this is a little laggy for me when you think about the body on frame com competition namely the Lincoln Navigator and the Cadillac Escalade. Those two are the two that this is, I think, really going after. Um, some people are calling it the American Range Rover. I, I don't know about that, but Navigator has the 3.5 liter high output EcoBoost, which is a phenomenal drivetrain. It is great with a trailer hooked up, and it's also decent on fuel when you're on the highway unloaded. Cadillac has couple drivetrains they offer. They, of course, have a big V8. They've got a 6.2 liter V8, but then they also have that turbo diesel, which is a different option. It has boost. It is perhaps a little better on fuel than the V8. And I'm just surprised that Ram isn't offering something else here for the sake of better fuel economy or better, you know, towing performance if you're looking to not wring the neck out of the motor up a hill. Um, it's surprising to me. Very comfortable, good ride quality from the suspension, even with the trailer hooked up. It's, uh, it's definitely land yachty, but not in a bad way. It's, it's land yachty in the sense of it's just a giant cruiser of a vehicle, but uh, you know, even over bumps and undulations with the trailer, you know, trying to slam a bunch of weight around on the back axle, everything feels nice and controlled. Um, you know, not a lot of upset of the whole chassis, which is really nice. All right, now we're getting to the the big hill. I hope you can still see me at least a little bit here. It's getting dark out, of course. It gets dark at 2 o'clock in the afternoon these days. But uh, this is a pretty decent incline. I don't know the, the percentage of grade, but we're starting off holding about 68 miles an hour. And stuff with a turbocharger can usually drop a couple gears and be fine. We dropped a couple gears. We're holding about 3,500 RPM. Obviously, it's very trafficy right now, um, but we are we are doing just fine up and over this mountain. Not a lot of drama. I want to accelerate a little, probe the throttle a hair more. So the 6.4 is a nice towing partner. Um, I think it's absurd for a vehicle that's not being used to tow, but it it is towing really well with minimal effort. It's not, I'm not working it super duper hard uh, at any point. This hill is a really good one to test, you know, how hard you really have to work something. And um, this is doing just fine. If you're willing to let this sit at 3,700 RPM, we're pulling up the hill with not a whole lot of fuss or drama. So that is it for this review of the 2022 Jeep, not Jeep, Grand Wagoneer Series 2. Thank you so much for coming along. As always, please uh, give us a follow right here on YouTube. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now TikTok, where I have no idea what to do, but we're there. Uh, and in the meantime, you can also find us at outmotorsports.com if you'd like to connect with some other LGBT automotive enthusiasts and motorsports competitors. We are over there with a whole uh, membership community, and we'd love to have you join us. Till next time, please stay safe, be well, see you again soon.